when she heard footsteps outside, Pungazalai went towards the door of Akaru's hut. Sendan Amuthan sighed thinking that she was going to leave him and go away. He assumed that his life would leave his body as she exited through the vent. Sinthan Amuthan saw Bungazalai open the door a little, look out and close the door again. What's so weird about it? Is it not only what has been left but also coming back to itself? Has her heart softened a bit? What is the reason? She taught herself to become a hero again, to capture the kingdom, and to rule on a lion. Her soul is an ocean tossed and tossed by the stormy wind of worldly desires. His mind is like a sweet funnel bathed in devotion to Lord Shiva. It was because of her that there was a small disturbance. A day is not going to get along with Bungasli. What's the use of futile speculation about it? Pungasli came close to him and stared at him with her flowery eyes. Synthane Muthan's heart fluttered. Why did you slam the door? Who came? Maybe mom or something. Said A. Muthan. Whoever it is, let him wait a little longer. Let him be outside until our conversation is over. Shouldn't anyone come across and interrupt the king and queen while they're talking in private? She said. King, queen. Who is the king? Who is the queen? A. Muthan stammered. You're the king, I'm the queen. What you've been saying all this time hasn't crossed your mind. No, flower girl. Did I just say that your teaching is of little use to me? Your instincts and mine are so different, they cannot agree. Said A. Muthan. We have to agree, said Punguzali. That's impossible. If you can't, I can. Amuda. I have made up my mind. I have given up the idea of marrying the royal son and ascending the throne. I have given up the palace life and the royal path. Your love is a million times greater to me than the palace life and the royal path. Because you refuse to come my way. I will come your way. I will marry you." Sendan Amuthan reached a state of ecstasy. Punguzali. Punguzali. Am I not in a trance now? Am I not dreaming? Are not the words you have spoken wrong in my ears? Have I not taken the wrong meaning? He said. Both of us will do Pushpa Tirapani for one and a half million people. Sometimes we board a boat and go to sea. There are many beautiful islands on the edge of the country. Sometimes we land on one of those islands. There you will be king and I will be queen. No one will compete for that kingdom. Amuda. You have no objection to all this. There is only one objection, Pungazali. The objection is that I am near to so great a privilege. Do you really say all this? Do you not say it to make me feel a great disappointment? No, no. You say the truth. When can you leave for Kadakare? You may leave as soon as you are well. I'm sick of it, flower girl. I can get up and walk now if I want to. See. After saying that, Sendan Amuthan tried to get up. Pungujali grabbed his hand and stopped him from getting up, no. Just bear with me for one day. She said. I heard someone knocking on the door. Mother is knocking on the door, open it. Let's tell this happy Samasara to mother, said Amuthan. Pungujali went and opened the door and what she saw at the door startled her a little. As she expected, it was not Vani Amai who knocked on the door. A palace servant must have knocked on the door. When the door opened, the servant stood aside. Beyond, stood Champion Mathavi and Prince Madhurand Hagar. A little further on, two palanquins were lowered. The guards and guards stood under the tree. Seeing all this scene in the light of the lamp held by one of them, Pungguli Sembian bowed his head in front of Mathavi and said, Mother must come. She said. How is your aunt's son sick? Pungazali. Where is Vani Amai? Asking that, the old lady Empiramati, who was the maternal uncle of Malavarian, entered the hut. Madhurand Hagen stood outside. But his hostile eyes looked curiously into the hut. Synthane Muthan also got up when he learned that the person coming was Shiva Bhakta Shuromani and Sempi in Mathavi, who had been saving them by giving them a grant. 
Mother. You have come at the right time. We have had the privilege of being blessed with the first happy news. This must have happened by Lord Shiva himself. I have not even told my mother yet. Mother. After all this time Pung J. Lai Manamirji has agreed to marry me. They should also be present and conduct our marriage. Dot after we get married, we intend to go to the Kadakare Gulagar temple and perform Pumala Kaingariam there. He said. Sembian Mathavi's expression could not tell whether the Matarasi was happy or disturbed by this news. A happy smile appeared on his petals. But there were tears in his eyes. When Amudan and Pungazalai bowed before him, Matarashi said in a soothing voice, Children! May your home life be blessed by the grace of the Lord! A.C.I. said. At that time, Vani Amai arrived there. She was told by Sembian Mathavi that he had come to know about Amudan's body because of the signal. He also said that he was happy to hear the news that they were going to get married. At that time, Vani Amai's face was showing both confusion and happiness. And after talking to Santhan Amudan and Punguzali for some time, Sempi and Mathavi came out. He and Madhurandhagan went towards the place where both the palanquins had been brought down. On the way the old Pratiyar stopped under a tree and looked around. After seeing that no one was around, he said to Madhurantha, Look, Madhurantha. The son I bore in my womb for ten months is Santhan Amuthan, who lives in Akudasai. I got to know this news when he was five years old. When I saw him lying speechless when he was eight days old, I thought he had died because of filial affection. I accepted him as my child and told him to take him and bury him. Vana who took him away never returned for a long time. After five years I saw him and this child and I knew the truth. However, I did not abandon you. I did not invite him to the palace because he was the son born in my womb. Thinking that everything is God's play, I brought you up ten times better than the son born in my womb. For that, give me this boon now. Say no to Chola lions. I will not object even if you mount a lion. But I fear what will happen if the children born in your dynasty remain mute. When Sembian Mathavi was saying this, Madhurinthagan's face was seen as a haunted face. A girl was born to the daughter of Chinapalyavatarayar whom he was marrying. He remembered that two prayers had passed and he had not yet begun to speak. Madurasi, the mother who brought him up, looked at Madhurinthagan, who was holding the maze and stood like a tree, child. Why are you standing like this? Let's go. Go to the palace and think carefully and answer tomorrow. She said. Madhurandhagan knocked and said, Mother. What is there to think about? Nothing. Go. I will come back after a little talk with your son, who should have grown up in the palace in my place. He said. Do so. Close the curtains of the Palak well when you come. If the soldiers of Kajumbalar see you, they will make any noise. After saying that, Amadarasi walked towards the palanquin above. Aparumati went away without noticing that Madhurantha's face had undergone a terrible change full of hostility and bitterness.